Hey, what's up, everybody? You're watching the sit-down on DJ Sixsmith. Bowl is back for season five. Glenn, Gordon, Karen here with us, the executive producer of the show. Glenn, welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. It's uh, it's a crazy year, but at least the good news is CBS shows are coming back and very happy that Bowl is back. And this one seemed like it was quite a challenge to put together given COVID and everything else in the world. I mean, you've been doing TV for a minute here. What was it like, you know, putting this first episode together? It, you know, it, it was uh, it was a little intimidating, but at the same time, very exhilarating. Um, uh, people who've seen the episode know how it ends and know that it, it sort of ends with this sort of, with the cast sort of reaching out to the audience and saying, we're so happy to be here and so happy that we're still getting to do this. And I think that's the way we authentically felt because there was a, a period, certainly in the May, June, July of it all, where we thought, are we ever coming back? Will, will anyone ever really be able to figure out a way that you can get 200 people together in one space to make a thing? Um, and so uh, between that and the idea that, um, you know, people lost friends and they lost relatives. And um, th there was a lot of reason to celebrate the fact that we were, we were being able to go back to work and that we had sort of survived, at least for the moment, everything that had sort of been hurled at us. So, uh, so I felt really good about it. It was a thrill to, uh, to write it and direct it and sort of be there and on the floor. And uh, it was fun. It was fun. It also felt like a thank you to the crew as well. And you show a bunch of the crew members. So what did it mean to you to, to showcase just all the people that go into making this thing happen? Well, it meant exactly that. I, I think it, it's easy to forget that, like I said, it takes about 200 people. Um, and um, uh, the, um, uh, you know, so, so it, it was a way of sort of saying to them, uh, and saying to the audience, hey, we're all in this together. And um, to the extent that you've been able to figure out how to go back to work, we're back to work now. And, and we're grateful that you show up every week and, and, and give a darn about us and want to see this and um, et cetera, et cetera, all of that. You know, I think the other interesting thing is that for all of us, we're kind of taking a step back, thinking about our own lives, thinking about how we do things. And for Bull, he certainly thinks about that in this episode because everything is changing in the courtroom and he yes. can't be the same guy potentially. So what was it like playing with that concept here in this episode? Well, uh, it was fun, obviously. And, and it really reflected my thinking. I mean, I was asked actually by the network and by the studio, I think around May, uh, so are you going to work COVID into the show? And at that point I said, no, I don't think so. Hopefully we'll be done with this in, in a little while. And the audience isn't gonna to wanna to hear about that again, for goodness sake. But as it became clear that it was gonna drag on for an extended period of time, you start thinking about all these other things. You know, Will I be able to go back to work? Will I be able to keep my family safe? Will I be able, will I recognize the world out there and the things that I love so much about the world, dealing with other people and talking to other people and touching other people, is any of that ever going to happen again? And if it isn't going to happen again, why didn't they tell me this was the last day? <laughs> so I could, so th those were all sort of things that were going through my mind. And, and so I started to look for a way to turn those into a story. And, um, and the good news is I managed to fool everybody and we turned it into a story. So yeah, all these things you take for granted, and, and Bull has those lines in there where he's talking about, like, going out to a show, you know, walking through Broadway, specifically in New York, too. There's so many of those things we take for granted every day. Are there a couple things that you're thinking about these last few months? You're like, I used to do this every day, and then I haven't done this for eight months. Like, what are some of those things for you? Oh, I have a ton of them, but I love movies, and it, it saddens me to think that that collective experience where you get 300 people in a room and they watch a, a wall for two hours, yeah. if that's gonna go away or might go away or might not recover that, I don't know why, but that makes me sad. We're, we're coming up on Thanksgiving and everybody I know is rethinking their Thanksgiving plans because we, we just always thought, hey, we'll get everybody together. We'll get the whole family together. We'll be in one place. We'll, we'll drink too much. We'll yell at each other. It'll be great. <laughs> um, and you know, that may not be the plan this year, um, so. You know, for somebody like you who loves movies and, you know, been making TV for a long time, whether it's this show or Medium and other things, what's the key in having staying power in Hollywood? How do you get things to cut through when there's so much noise in the space? I have no idea. I, I, I've just always been my own critic, my own muse, I guess, to some extent. And I've always, I, I, I've tried never to be didactic about it and say, oh, they'll like this. 
I'm doing this for that. I kind of write and direct and produce things that amuse me in the hopes that maybe it'll amuse someone else. So even the show, you, you know, that you watched, um, there were, there was a moment after we put it all together when I thought, well, this is just too damn weird. <laughs> They're going to, you know, the network's going to go, what are you doing? Um, and luckily that wasn't the reception, but, but you know, that's really been, if, if there's any secret, it's that. And I'm not sure that's the secret to success. I'm just, that's the way I sort of, that's the way I do it. That's the way I've always done it. Whether I'm making a movie or a television show, or whatever, I, 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 I have to rely on my own um, instinct, which is why I relate to Bull, because he very, is a very much an instinctive, see how I did that segue? I like that. That's smart yeah. there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but he's very much an instinctive guy, you know, um, yeah. as a character, so. It's interesting when those types of people who are so about what they're thinking in their gut, when they start to question themselves, like that sort of scares you as a person who may be a little bit indecisive because you're like, if Bull's questioning his life, then what, what am I thinking here? I think it's a pretty, pretty fascinating thing to kind of play with it. Yeah, yeah. And I know Michael really dug it. You know, we, we had an enormous amount of fun. Um, uh, we just, we authentically adore working together. Um, and I did not know Michael before I started this, didn't know of him or anything. So we sort of learned, uh, we were sort of thrown in together and kind of learned each other's MO and, um, and uh, but this was particularly fun. Cause you know, when you call a guy and you go, listen, I've got this idea and you're gonna do a bunch of lip syncing. <laughs> oh, and, and at one point you're gonna sing to yourself. You know, that, that's a leap of faith. <laughs> that's a huge leap of faith. You got everybody involved there too, which yes. is cool. Yes, we have a great cast. We have a great cast. They're they're wonderful people, and they're, and they're truly game for anything. I, I mean, one of the toughest calls you'll ever have to make is calling a singer as gifted as Christopher Jackson, mm -hmm. and saying, "Listen, I've got this thing, and and there's a song, except it won't be your voice. You'll be lip syncing this song. You know, that's that's not a you know. But he was cool. He was so great. He was like, "Sure, I'm in." You know, um, no, it's it's a great group of people. It's a great I'm really happy to hear that. So you kept us on our toes in that first episode. What else can people expect here in this season? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> more hijinks. Um, well, I, I think people can expect to see Bull and Company working in a, a slightly modified environment because COVID hasn't left us yet. Um, but also they can see their lives continue to, to move on. Uh, people who follow the show know that... Uh, Bull has been trying to get Izzy to marry him for a second time now that they have a child and she's, she's, uh, she's demurred and that's going to reach a sort of a, a conclusion of sorts. Um, uh, Marissa and her husband uh, have been going through a divorce that too is going to reach, it sounds like a soap opera, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> but, that, but that too will reach its, its conclusion. Um, there's a big surprise for, uh, for Benny, um, which I won't share with you because then it wouldn't be a big surprise. That's always the trick of these interviews is you gotta how, do I, the how, do, how do I entice you? you know, <laughs> there are big changes coming, but I'm not sharing any of them with you. Um, uh, but suffice it to say, there really are some big changes coming, some exciting things and um, some hopefully some really intriguing cases. Um, and we look forward to coming back and as we did, as we said at the end of that show and, and really, really genuinely miss the audience and miss the, miss the privilege of being able to tell stories for them. Well, it was awesome to watch that first episode. Looking forward to the rest here. Glenn, nice to meet you, man. Stay healthy Thank and you. thanks so much. All right. Be good. <laughs>